With so much negativity in the news cycle lately, I thought it was about time we had some positive news for once. You know, the uh, kind of news we rarely get nowadays. Anyway, there's a lot to cover, so let's get started. Let's start off with some positive entertainment news, specifically one of my favorite subjects, the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Much of the success of the MCU can be attributed to Kevin Feige's leadership, plus the incredible work done by directors like Jon Favreau, Taika Waititi, and the Russo brothers. The MCU has become one of, if not the biggest movie franchise in cinematic history. Avengers Endgame even defeated James Cameron's Avatar for highest grossing movie of all time. So it is no surprise that Kevin Feige has earned a promotion from all this success. Effective immediately, he is now the Chief Creative Officer for Marvel. What this means is, the movie and comic book divisions of Marvel now answer directly to him. Kevin is also the new head of Marvel's TV division. This should end the schism between the TV and movie divisions of Marvel that has lingered on for a number of years now. Because of this ideological split, most of the TV side of Marvel's continuity has been segregated from the MCU. This split has been most pronounced in the Netflix Marvel shows. ABC's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. was more closely connected to the MCU. The series even played an important role in setting up major events in Avengers Age of Ultron. But that connection to the MCU was short-lived, and Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. has had little connection to the movies since then, other than a brief mention of Thanos in the last season. The ill-fated Inhumans had virtually no connection to the movies at all, despite the fact that they were supposed to be taking place in the same continuity. The Marvel shows on Disney+, Plus, which Kevin Feige is now in charge of, will definitely take place in the MCU. Now that Disney also has Fox, we've learned that the Fantastic Four and X-Men are finally coming to the MCU as well. And in Miss Marvel, on Disney Plus, major Inhumans characters will be recast and given a second chance to get it right. All of this is under the leadership of the man who helmed the MCU through 23 carefully connected movies, forming one single overall story arc. It's quite an accomplishment, and I can't wait to see what comes of Marvel in the future. Continuing on your theme of movie news, DC and Warner Brothers won big in the box office. The Joker movie with Joaquin Phoenix earned a whopping $208 million in the box office. The movie was made on a budget of $55 million. Much of the success of the film can be attributed to Joaquin Phoenix himself, who gave an Oscar-worthy performance as Arthur Flick and his spiraling descent into madness as a Joker. The movie is as much a commentary on how people with mental disorders is treated by society as it is the of the iconic DC supervillain. The establishment media was desperate for a tragedy to happen at the premiere of the film. They'd been playing up the whole white virgin males bad propaganda for weeks. They needed a tragedy to support their agenda, and they didn't get one. It got so bad that Warner Brothers and the director banned reporters from the red carpet event. All the establishment media accomplished it in doing is further exposing themselves for what they are, fake news. But enough of those assholes. I've got some interesting gaming news. Star Citizen might be getting close to a beta. Chris Roberts of Wing Commander fame launched the project on Kickstarter in 2011. Since then, Star Citizen has gone on to become the highest grossing crowdfunded project in history. The game is playable right now, 
in an alpha state and has been in alpha for eight years. There's been some accusations that the game is a scam and a lot of people say that it will never get finished. Those unfamiliar with game development don't understand that the alpha stage of game development is always the longest. During this time, developers aren't as interested in fixing bugs as they are in building out the game's technology and mechanics. The first beta phase is where all the game's features are all integrated and tied together. The second beta phase, if there is one, is where there's a feature freeze, and then the developers go on a bug hunt. Right now, as new updates to the game are released, the open world servers are wiped each time. Players start over with the ship that they had purchased, plus the starter amount of cash. Very soon, those server wipes will end. This is a clear indication that the developers may be getting close to a beta. TigerCon has been playing the game recently. In his experience, he found the game was, was indeed buggy, but there was no lack of content. He discovered there was more game to Star Citizen than others, especially the establishment gaming media, have actually claimed. Tigra became interested in the game after watching videos by Cobra TV. Cobra TV is an independent content creator on YouTube who stuck it out with No Man's Sky when most everyone else had abandoned the game. Now, as he did with No Man's Sky, Cobra TV has fully embraced Star Citizen and has been releasing videos that show the positive side of the, of the game, rather than focusing on the negative. Tiger and I are working on a more in-depth discussion of Star Citizen for the Gamers Bay channel. We'll be looking at the game and discussing Squadron 42. It isn't what people think it is, and that revelation will change everything you thought you knew about Star Citizen. Look forward to that video later this weekend. And that's the news worth telling at the moment. From now on, I'll endeavor to bring you more positive, geeky news than doom and gloom. Let the establishment media wallow in negativity like the swine they are. I've been Mike DeZorch, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Namaste. This and other videos can be found on our alternate channels on LBRY and BitChute. Links are in the description below.